Hey guys, Katie here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my, um, what was it, a Ralph's haul. Um, there's not much left actually in it, but also I have another package from Bryce that I'm going to open. And um, I found some goodies from Dollar General that I'm going to show off. There's only like nine titles. Um, and then also I'm going to show what I'm going to be giving away um, for this giveaway. Um, I think it's four titles that I have this time. Um, so go ahead and watch until the end and I will show you and explain the giveaway details and everything. So um, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and open up the package first. Oh, and also, um, I went ahead and I did choose a name for the kitten. Um, thank you, everybody, for all of your suggestions and everything. Um, there were two names that I liked the most. Um, the first one was uh, Pazuzu from uh, Now It's Dark who suggested it. Um, I really liked that. Uh, cause at first, honestly, uh, it's probably shameful that I didn't know this, but that's the demon name from the exorcist. Um, but, um, so that one I liked. And then also, um, Bryce suggested, um, I think it's Cthulhu, uh, the octopus demon from, um, HP Lovecraft. Because it's also one of the creatures that's in Rick and Morty as well. Um, which I never knew what his name was or what it was called. Um, but I keep wanting to say like Kaluth and Cthulhu. I keep, cause I, I'm not even sure if Cthulhu is actually right or not. Um, I think it is now, but I kept getting those two mixed up. So that was just a little bit too hard for me to remember. Um, so, but what I decided to go with, actually, is Cujo. Um, now, dogs aren't, I mean, they're creatures in a certain way, but then they're also not, because I don't know how everybody would feel about that or not, but the reason why I wanted to go with Cujo is because um, the kitten's mom, her name is Pennywise. And then, um, my cat, Misery, who had gotten pregnant or had her litter, uh, not that long after, uh, Pennywise did, um, they started nursing off of Misery, because they were, I think, like, two or three weeks apart between their litters, um, and that's just kind of how it goes with cats, you know, the motherly instinct is just there, so if a kitten you know, wants to nurse off of a different mom, you know, it, yeah. So, but, so both of their names are Stephen King names. And so I never thought of that before. And then just somewhere I was just like, oh, what about Cujo? So, but thank you everyone seriously for all your suggestions. I really appreciate it. And I hope I'm not offending anybody by not, you know, taking any of your suggestions or anything it's just you know when I was thinking about it and everything I just I really liked that um to keep it within the Stephen King realm and you know Cujo I just thought that was cute and that would work so but so got the kitten name now so okay so first up here from Bryce we have Battle Creek And <laughs> speaking of Stephen King and Pennywise, yeah, Bill Skarsgård. Some scars never heal. So we got that one. And then finally, finally, I can finish off my Indiana Jones collection. I have all the other three movies. This is the only one that I was missing, so I'm very happy about that one. So 
because I haven't seen this one in forever. I think, honestly, out of the four of them, um, I like the third one the best because of the chemistry between him and um, Sean Connery, um, who plays his dad. Um, I just think they're really funny together in the third one. That's just my opinion, though. But very happy for that one. And then this is so awesome. He found me the complete first season of Archer. Which for anyone who follows me on Instagram, if you saw my post that I was taking a break from watching my true crime on uh, the streaming service. And I finally started uh, re-watching Archer. Um, and then I think it was like the next day or or maybe two days after that post or something, he found me this. So it was like, you know, awesome timing. So, because I don't have any of these actually on physical. So, um, but yeah, very, very happy about this one. And then next up, he found me vacancy with a nice little slip cover. So that's awesome. And this is a really great movie. Golly, at one time this was $28.99. Wow. Hug! Oh yeah, and if everybody could see, I got Seiko with me. She's co-hosting tonight, I guess. <laughs> Although it should be hug, face hugger. He's over there making so much noise. So very happy to have this one though. And I do want to see the second one. Um, but this one is a very awesome movie. So, got those. And then I'm going to show off the ones I found from Dollar General. Starting with... Another steel book that I found. Sherlock Holmes. Now again, you guys know that I don't have a Blu-ray player right now. Yes, but, you know, $5 and Sherlock Holmes is one of my favorite action movies. Just it's all around greatness. And I'm just realizing now that it's PG-13. Huh. I mean, it makes sense. There's really not, like, a lot of cussing or anything like that going on. But for a Guy Ritchie film, it's always weird to see when they're PG-13. But, yeah, I absolutely love this movie. The chemistry between just everybody in here is awesome. And Mark Strong, his character, I love him. He's, he's just wonderful job. So, and I don't know... Um, with this being a Warner Brothers one, it seems like a lot of their Blu-ray, I don't know if it's the same, you know, for Steelbooks or whatever, but it seems like a lot of theirs have come with digital copies. But I think, honestly, I actually already have this on digital. I'm not 100% sure on that or not. But, you know, I'm really starting to love Steelbooks, so very happy about that. And then I found Milk. For just a dollar. And these are all brand new ones too. They're not those um, used ones that you see at the Dollar Tree. Or I mean at uh, Dollar General. But I've never actually seen this one. But I know it's based on a true story. And this one also has James Franco. And Josh Brolin. Diego Luna. And Emil... Hirsch? Is that maybe how you say that? But it's His Life Changed History, His Courage Changed Lives. Academy Award winner Sean Penn stars in this stirring celebration of Harvey Milk, a true man of the people. Based on an inspiring true story of the first openly gay man elected to major public office, this compelling film follows Milk's powerful journey to inspire hope for equal rights during one of the least 
tolerant times in our nation's history. And then it just talks about the cast and stuff, so. But yeah. So, definitely looking forward to checking that one out. And then I found The Darkness. Which I have seen this one, and... I mean, it's not the best, but it's not the worst either, so... And it does come with a digital copy, so I can watch it right now through Voodoo. And it has, who's the other one? Is it uh, Maria Bellio or something? Who else is in here? Oh my god, that is so small. Um... No, she's the, um, she's the one from Silent Hill, sorry, I really cannot read her name, and it says Kevin, and, or it says Bacon, just the last names, and then her last name is Mitchell, but uh, it's still not ringing any bells, anyways. So, I got that one, but I think that's her from, um, what did I say, Silent Hill? Um, anyways, I also found Logan Lucky. Which has Daniel Craig and Channing Tatum. And Adam Driver. And a Riley Kilg. I don't know who that one is. But I know I've heard of this movie before, but I did not know that it had Daniel Craig in it, so. And the sticker is covering the thing, so. But. Hopefully this one looks good. See how the other half steals. Hmm. And then I found... I think that says Bennett's War. Marshall Bennett is a young soldier with the Army Motorcycle Unit who survives an IED explosion in combat overseas and is medically discharged. Just, uh, medically discharged. Sorry. <laughs> With a broken back and leg and sent back to the U.S. When he gets home to his family farm, he discovers that his dad, Cal Bennett, is behind on the mortgage and may lose the farm. Against all odds, Marshall Bennett pledges to help his family the only way he knows how as a motocross racer. So this one sounds interesting. I don't know if it's based on a true story or not. It doesn't it doesn't say. Usually if it is it will say Hi Wonka you rarely ever come up here. Wonka. No. Uh. This one's 2018 or 19, 94 minutes. And this one's also Warner Brother, rated PG-13. And it has Allison Page, Trace Adkins, Michael Rorick. And Ollie Afshire, something, Afshire, something like that. And then next up I got Dear Dictator. This one has Michael Caine, Katie Holmes. Uh, looks like Seth Green and Odea Rush. Uh, 
uh, when political turmoil forces British Caribbean dictator Anton Vincent uh, to flee his island nation, he seeks refuge in the most unlikely of places with rebellious teenage girl Tatiana and her mother in suburban America. In an outrageous turn of events, the dictator winds up turning Tatiana into a rebel, teaching her how to start a revolution and overthrow the popular kids who rule her high school. Huh. That sounds cute. It's a Cynodyne one. Uh, I think that says 90 minutes. And it looks like 2018. And it says not rated. So. Interesting. And then I found the domestics. Wait, right? Yeah, the domestics. It's Mad Max meets The Purge. Good people didn't survive. They did. This has Kate Bosworth and Tyler Ho Chilo. I psh, no idea in the world. Um. Yeah, this sticker's covering it, but it says Cynodyne. Uh, looks like 2018, 95 minutes, rated R. Looks like Ori, or Cynodyne, yeah. So this one sounds interesting, though. Still actually need to watch Mad Max. I know I have like the Road Warrior, but again, it's it's on DVD. I can't remember if it came with a digital copy or not, but I know that's like one of the sequels because I think Mad Max is like the first one, I think. So I need to watch all of those. Oh. Wonka. And then I found Nocturna. I think is how you say that. As Mike Doyle, Estelle Warren, and Jonathan. Oh my god. I'm not even going to try with that name. I have no idea where to even start. But it says, um, it's Christmas in New Orleans. And children are mysteriously disappearing. Vanishing without a trace. Detectives find a young girl in the swamps and she leads them to the den of her captors. A group of merciless vampires who feed on the blood of children. And this one is not rated from 2014. Uh, it's 92 minutes from Alchemy. I don't know if I've ever heard of Alchemy before. To live forever, first you must die. So it definitely sounds interesting. So, And then last one from Dollar General is um, The Steam Engine of Oz. It's an animated one with Ron Perlman and William Shatner doing voices. Their adventure will take them to a magical place. 
It says Ron Perlman, Will Shatner, and Julianne Hugh. Let's say Hugh. Um, lend their voice talents to this um, fantastical journey to Oz 100 years after Dorothy clicked her ruby red slippers. A young engineer named Victoria joins forces with the Scarecrow, a not-so-cowardly lion, and some industrious munchkins to find the Tin Man's heart before he destroys their world by industry and mechanization. Along their inspiring journey, they learn a power lesson about friendship and how love can o overcome any obstacle. Hmm. Uh, this one is uh, Cynodyne also. Oh, I really need to get a magnifying glass. I think that says 79 minutes. And I don't know for sure if that says 2018 or not. Oh, this is terrible. I think it says 2018. And it says it's not rated. So, but it sounds cute. So, we got that. Okay. Okay. Now to finish off the rest of my haul from, uh, what do you call it, Rouse. Um, well actually, real quick, I know I've already shown this one off, but I just watched it. And it's not the movie that I thought it was, but I watched, um, The Pianist. And this was a really, really great movie. Um, it follows him... Um, Adrian Brody's character all through um, the beginning or I don't know if it's the beginning I'm not a history person sorry I don't know for sure or not but he's um, Jewish um, and everything and it goes through his journey of dealing with um, the Nazis and everything like that and him you know like I said he's Jewish so it just, it follows him in his life and everything from starting, like, I think it starts out in 1940, and, yeah, it just continues on through the whole ordeal, um, and everything, so, and it's a two hour and 30 minute long movie, so it is a long watch, but it's worth it, um, and yeah, it's, it's a really good movie. So, I just wanted to put that out there um, about this movie, that I did watch it, and that's probably, like, the shittiest review ever, but, you know, I mean, I don't know really what else to say without, like, giving stuff away or whatever. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, this is definitely worth a watch. And then I also did watch the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I did like it. Um, I liked uh, more towards the end um, when it got really interesting. Um, but the ending was kind of really just abrupt. I thought that was... But they kind of, I think, did that with the remake, too. They kind of just, yeah. Um, so, but, yeah, I was definitely glad I was able to watch this. Um, and, uh, yeah, they did a good job on the special effects and everything, even back in 74. So that was pretty awesome to see. So, very happy still to have this one and to finally have been able to watch it and everything. So, very happy about that. So, okay, where is... Okay, we'll start out with these ones. Um, I don't have the first one, but I found... 
um, what is it? Family of Cops 2 with Charles Bronson. I have no idea if these are any good or not, but I think Charles Bronson is a pretty good actor, isn't he? I don't know. I can't even think of anything else like other than isn't he in like the original Death Wish movies. Which I've never seen those. I'm just, you know, saying like back in the day, isn't he like um, Bruce Willis stature action star type thing? So I found the second one and I found the third one. And the second one, <clears throat> Inspector Paul, oh god, F-E-I-N, would that be Fiend, maybe? I'm gonna go with Fiend. Uh, returns to take down the world's most infamous crime ring. When a local priest is brutally murdered, all evidence points to the Russian Mafia. Forced to return to the neighborhood of his youth, Fiend must confront the very demons he escaped many years before. But fear has a long and powerful reach in Milwaukee's close-knit Russian community. When those who can help him refuse to talk, more people end up dead. And unless Fiend agrees to back off, he and his family could be the next victims. So that's for the second one. Alright, hey guys, sorry about that. My phone freaking shut itself off again, so I had to make some room. Anyways, um, before I forget, after I showed off everything that I got from Bryce, I did not say my usual thank you, thank you, thank you so much, um, and everything. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Bryce, for those. I really greatly appreciate it so much. Um, and... I will be getting your packages mailed off as soon as possible. Um, and then hopefully um, next Friday or that next Wednesday, I think, um, I should be going out again. And so um, we should be able to find some more goodies and everything. So, um, but continuing on... Um, got the Family of Cops 3 that I was reading the back of. I'm just going to start all over because I'm just going to edit the part where I was reading this out. Um, when the family business revolves around wearing a badge, there's never a dull moment because bringing your work home can be deadly. Charles Bronson is back as Inspector Paul... Did I say Fiend, I think, is how I pronounced it? Um, a career cop whose tender side for his grandkids in, ugh, grandkids is in sharp contrast to his tough-as-nails demeanor on the job. Um, a wealthy banker and his wife are found brutally slain and the trail of blood leads straight to the city's top officials. Turns out, Milwaukee today is like Miami ten years ago. Drug money is being laundered at an alarming rate, but no one is talking. And the body count is mounting. With time running out, his family in jeopardy, and his own life and reputation on the line... Fiend must crack a case with all the earmarks of an inside job before murder really hits home. So. This one. I don't think I see a date on here. 
Yeah, I don't see a date, but it's 90 minutes. PG-13 from Trimark. I want to say this is from the 80s, maybe, or early 90s. I'm not sure, though. So, but there's the third uh, family of cops one. And then next up, we have this uh, Miramax Romantic Comedy Series. It has My Boss's Daughter, Wishful Thinking, About Adam, and Down to You. And I don't even think I've heard, of, I mean, other than my boss's daughter, of course, but these other three, I don't think I've ever even heard of them, honestly. Even though they have, you know, well-known actresses in them. Actors and actresses in them. Like, Wishful Thinking has Drew Barrymore. Uh, Down to You is Freddie Prince Jr. and Julia Stiles. And then About Adam has Kate Hudson and Stuart Townsend in it. But I'm not going to read all four of these ones off or anything. Um, but, yeah, I'm just surprised that I've never heard of these other three. So, but got that one. And then this one is a three movie collection, but it includes a bonus music CD. And the CD is Gentle Rain Sound. But we got Follow the River, What I Did for Love, and The Inheritance. But again, I've never heard of any one of these either. Uh, let's see. Follow the River doesn't have any any names that I recognize. The Inheritance. No one that I recognize. And What I Did for Love. Uh, again, no one that I recognize either. So. And then you have the CD is Soothing Sounds for Body and Soul, Beautiful Sounds of Nature, Gentle Rain. Probably never listened to it or anything. Let me make sure. Yeah. It's the first one that's actually in there. So I've never seen one like that before, though, that actually has the CD in there like that. So that was interesting. And then, I already have this three-pack, but, I mean, for 50 cents, I wasn't going to pass it up because it might be in better condition than my copy. Um, but it's the Sandra Bullock three-pack with 28 Days, The Net, and Premonition. And 28 Days is okay. Um, it's not my favorite, but The Net and Premonition I love. Those are two very awesomely great movies of hers. And I think these are all on... Oh no, The Net and Premonition is on one disc and then 28 Days is on a single disc. So, but I was happy to find another copy of that one. And then I found this uh, four film favorites of martial arts. We have, um, I don't, is that Militant Eagle? The Project, Product, Prodigal, Prodigal, so, I don't know, something boxer. Um, Moonlight Sword and Jade Lion and the Bloody Fist. Sorry, I think I fucked up on these two names. But Militant and Prodigal, Progital, something. And 
And on the back here, it says English language version. I don't know if it's just for this, for the last movie, which would be Bloody Fist, I think. Or if that's meaning for all of them. Hoping it's for all of them or at least, you know, that they have subtitles and stuff. Because I think these are all older movies, too. Um, uh, let me see. I don't think. It says how long each one is individually, but not, like. The years for these individually on when, when they were released so but they look like they're kind of older ones so but figured I'd give it a shot so 50 cents and then I found this um, three action pack one we have Michael Caine in uh, play dirty Christopher Walken in the dogs of war and Gregory Peck in The Purple Plane. I may have actually showed this one off in the previous video. I do not remember for sure or not, to be honest. And then I found this interesting one, and I got it because it's a Magnet Magnolia release. But it's Hank and Mike. Never heard of it before. It says, a furry version of the odd couple. Pink annoyed and unemployed and this has Chris Klein in it that's the only name that I recognize but it says meet Hank and Mike two blue collared Easter bunnies who get fired and try their hand at an assortment of odd jobs failing at each fighting depression debt and eventually each other these two longtime pals set out on a mission to recapture their jobs, get the girl, and settle the score. So it looks ridiculous, but hopefully the good kind of ridiculous. I mean, they're freaking pink bunnies, right? Uh, it's rated R. Looks like 2008. And I think that says 86 minutes. So, take a look and see what that's all about. And then I don't remember if I showed this one off or not either. I think I did, but just in case. Um, this documentary, One Day in September... And this one is brand new factory sealed still. But this one is uh, the 1999 Academy Award winning documentary features gives new insight into the 1972 Munich, I think, massacre. The murder of 11 Israel athletes by a group of Palestinian extremists. For the first time, the lone surviving member of the extremist group, who has been in hiding for 28 years, speaks about the horrific events and provides the first account from his perspective. And this is a Sony Picture Classic. 97 minutes graded R from uh, I don't know if that says 2005 or does it say I 
can't read what that says. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, I do not know what year this is, what it says on here. Maybe that's Academy Award winner, 1999. Which I already read that up, but that, yeah, then 1999. Duh, blonde. Sorry, guys. I, I have no control over the blondness. Um, and then I also found this triple feature one with uh, Deliver Us from Eva, Something New, and The Best Man. Which I think I actually might have all of these individually, but I'm not 100% sure. And I think the only one that I've seen I think at least is something new. I know I've definitely seen that one, but the other two I don't think I have seen, but I'm not 100% sure. So. Like that one. And then I found um, The Art of Getting By, which has uh, Freddie Highmore and Emma Roberts in it. And as you can see, the case is broke, but that's okay. And this one, um, I don't even know what that first word says. Fantastic? No, they. I don't know, something teenager gray or George Zinove, I don't know, is a master at just barely getting by. Oh my god, why do I even try? Um. Fatalistic? Up. Is that even a word? Fatalistic. I don't know. I just that's what it looks like. Teenager George, played by you know Freddie Highmore, of course, is a master at just barely getting by. In fact, he's practically turning into an art form, making it through the entire school year without doing a shred of work. But when George meets a beautiful and complicated girl named Sally, Emma Roberts, he discovers a kindred spirit who turns his... That's slacker? Slacker world upside down. They're quirky and... Oh, what is wrong with you eyes? Quirky on unexpected romance may just inspire George to do the unthinkable. Get off his butt and chase after his dreams. Huh. And this is PG-13, and I will not be able to read anything else other than this is Fox. God, I am terrible. I am sorry, guys. Okay, next up, we got The Incredible Journey of Mary Bryant. And this is a two-part uh, mini-series. And 
this has Sam Neill, Jack Davenport, Romola, Grant something, and then Alex O'Loughlin. Crime, Punishment, Redemption, and Heroism. In 1788, Mary Bryan, a starving young Cornwall girl, is convicted of a petty crime and sentenced to seven years in the Australian penal colony of Botany, or Botany, maybe that's it, Botany Bay. Uh, when Mary... initiates an escape. She embarks on an arduous, I don't know, 4,000 mile journey towards freedom in a tragic and triumphant story that would make her one of history's most fascinating and courageous unsung heroines. So I wonder if that means that she's a real person. Um, this is rated R, and it's actually 184 minutes. So it's like almost two movies in one, almost. Um, of course, Sam Neill is from uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, Jack Davenport is from the first two pirate movies. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, and then Dead Man's Chest. And then uh, Romolan Gorani, whatever that name is, um, is from Vanity Fair and Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. And this is from Timeless Media Group. So, and this is 2007. So, this one sounds pretty good. And then the last one is Youth Without Youth. And I do recognize him, but I just, I do not know from where. And, let's see. Romania is on the brink of war with Germany. And, oh God. <sighs> Ling Linguistics, I don't know, something. Professor uh, Dominic something, played by Tim Roth, um, has little left to live for. On, I think, Easter Day. God, what is going on? On Easter Day, he crosses the street and is struck by a yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm not gonna finish reading. Trying to read it. That's just really sad and pathetic right now. Sorry. Um. But yeah, got that. Okay. Now for the giveaway. Um. We got the biggest one that's probably going to be the one, yeah. Um, I got the Hangover Steel Book. Brand new factory seal. And then I have um, Dig Digimon Digital Monsters. Um, the official... Second Season, Volume 6. It's a three-disc set. Um, 
on DVD, of course. Can't tell. And then another three disc set. Um, the World Wrestling Entertainment presents Raw, the best of 2010. Like I said, also a three disc set on DVD. I think it's like over 10 hours. Um, where did it say it at? Or more than 20 matches. Oh, approximate running time is 9 hours. So I've got this one too. And then the last one is going to be Jean Claude Van Damme in Kill 'em All. So I hope this is a good giveaway, guys. Uh, this is my third one that I've done so far. Um, so just to enter. Uh, you have to be subscribed to my channel, of course, um, and you have to live in the United States, um, and then you just have to pick a number, um, let's do it, let's do 1 through 40 this time, uh, I don't remember what numbers I used to do it, or did for the other ones, um, but just do 1 through 40, um, just go ahead and pick any number between 1, you know, and 40. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and write whatever number you pick down. And then I'm just going to draw it out of a hat. So, it's just that simple. Um, so, yeah. So, just be subscribed to my channel. Um, just leave your um, number between anything from 1 to 40 and just make sure you know that you're not doubling it from if someone else picked it or not already. Um, leave your number down in the comments and um, be a U.S. resident. Um, and I'll probably, probably announce the winner middle to late of next week. So, you know, there's going to be plenty of time for everybody to have a chance to enter. And, um, yeah. And then I'll just pick a number out of hat. If I pick your number, then there you go. So, okay, guys. Well, thank you for everyone uh, for watching and for anyone who's going to enter the contest. Think, or not contest, a giveaway. You know, thank you so much for entering. And, um, hopefully I will be doing another video here soon, still showing off, you know, some other pawn shop and other Ralph's record stuff that I've gotten. And then, um, hopefully, like I said, next week I will be able to go out and get some more stuff to show off also. Um, so. Hey guys, sorry, the video cut me off at the end. Um, I just wanted to say thank you everybody for watching. And thank you for everybody who's going to participate in the giveaway. And, um, yeah, just thank you. So, all right, guys. Well, stay safe out there and happy hunting. And I will see you soon in my next video. All right, bye, guys.